Welcome back. This is lesson five of machine learning Zoom Camp session two, and now we will talk about linear regression. So, linear regression is a model that uh, we use for solving regression problems, uh, meaning that uh, we use for uh, predicting uh, numbers. So, the output of the model is a number. And uh, yeah, you probably remember from the introduction there is uh, regression there is classification and there is ranking so we are now talking about regression and linear regression is a model for solving this and you probably also remember this formula that we used uh, in the introduction lesson so um, here g is uh, the our model then x is the feature matrix And why is our target? So in this case, y is uh, price. And this, this model G will be linear regression. Okay. And uh, we will come back to this form. So here x is a matrix. We'll come back to this form. But before we do this, let's take a look at a simplified form. So let's look at uh, the same one, but here instead of looking at capital uh, capital X, which is the entire feature matrix, we will look at only one observation. So one observation uh, will be, so this is a, just a car, some car. And this is its price. So we don't look at all the cars at the same time, at all the price at the same time. We just look at one, at one car. So this car, um, so this is, uh, it's, it can be a row in our feature matrix. So you can think of it as a vector. It consists of multiple elements. So let's say it's a n-dimensional vector. So the first uh, element of this is uh, uh, xi1, then we have xi2, uh, and so on, xin. So we have uh, n elements here. So this is our uh, this is our vector, right? So what we actually um, want to have is a function that takes in all these uh, features from uh, x on, uh, xi1 to xin, and then produces something that is uh, close to the price. Right? So this, this is what we want to do. And uh, yeah, regarding this axis, so these are different characteristics of, a cars, of cars that we have, of this specific car. Uh, so let's take a look at what we actually have. So in our data set, and we now will use training data set because uh, this is what we will use for training the data. So remember this, uh, this capital X, it's feature matrix training. So we don't look at validation, we don't look at uh, testing, we only look at training here. And let's take a look at uh, any, so we have quite a few, um, quite a few rows here. Let's take a look at uh, row number 10. So this is uh, Rolls Royce uh, of uh, model Phantom Drophead Coupe, uh, which was manufactured in 2015. So we have all these characteristics. So let's just take um, engine horsepower. We'll take uh, city miles per gallon. And we take popularity. We will take um, these three just to make it a bit shorter. We don't want to take uh, uh, more. It will be a bit more difficult to explain. And yeah, so we have that. So for this uh, for this particular car, uh, we have uh, so for. Uh, engine horsepower, we have 453 um, 
that's the horsepower that's the power of uh, our engine then four miles uh, per gallon in the city we have 11 and then popularity is 86 so this is our feature matrix so let's go back here and let's write it so this is x i where i is actually 10 so and for this x so our first feature is engine horsepower then it's uh, miles per gallon in the city and then popularity 86 so now we need to, to write a function that uh, takes in this g i uh, it takes in this x i and then produce produces a prediction for this car so in code it looks something like uh, this so let's call it uh, g so g and then it takes gets in this x i and then it uh, does something do something and then return prediction so let's say we predict that this car uh, costs ten thousand right so and then uh, so this is our uh, x uh, i so then we just our function gives us something right and this is something we will need to implement so of course we uh, we don't leave it like this this is something we implement so this will be our um, our linear regression so let's see how we can actually implement this so let's Okay, there's the drop, the drop board. Um, yeah, so we have uh, this. So the uh, and we need to combine uh, this uh, variable, these values, in a way that we have something close to this. And uh, for that, the formula for uh, applying linear regression is this. So this uh, uh, g x i. Is first we have uh, the bias term. So this is the bias term. This is the, the prediction that we, we make uh, without knowing anything about the car. But we actually know something about the car. So we know this uh, engine uh, capacity. So it's in our case, it's uh, uh, XI1, right? And then for this aging horsepower, there is some weight, W1. So we don't just take this uh, feature is this, we multiply it by some weight. Then we have another feature, which is uh, miles per gallon in the city, which is xi2, right? And then we have weight for this feature as well, it's w2. And then we also have uh, the same one for, uh, for the last one, for popularity. So this is the formula. We have four uh, linear regressions. Let me, oops. So I want to copy it and move it to the next slide. So we see here that uh, we can actually replace that part. Okay, go away. We can replace this part. This part we can replace with a sum. So then we can write it as. Uh, so first we have the bias term, and then we have a sum. Um, the sum goes from, uh, so because we already use i here, we'll use j here. So it's from one to three, we have three elements here. So we have wg times xig. So it's just a more compact form of writing this. So now let's let's implement this. Let's write this in code. So this is our G. We can just call it maybe linear regression. Linear regression. And then so we have our XI. And uh, what we need to have is uh, some uh, W0, which is our bias term. Let's do um, zero for now. And then we have this uh, W, which is a vector. So we have uh, the weight for each feature. So we have this one, this one, and this one. Um, so I don't know, let's put them zeros for now. 
or once. And yeah, this could be zero. So what we do is we need to implement this formula now. So I'll just uh, write it one more time. So we have it. So we have uh, W zero, and then we have a sum from one to three, WG XIG. Because we use uh, here uh, pandas, or we use uh, Python, so here so it should actually go not from one, but from uh, zero to three minus one, like in this case two. So it's from zero to, uh, we can make it generic, let's make it n. So n is the number of uh, features we have, right? So it goes from zero to one. So let's implement this. So for us, n will be the length of this feature vector and also the length of uh, this uh, weights vector so it should match of course and then here is our prediction so we start with uh, w0 right and then we have a loop for j in uh, range uh, n so we we, we do it uh, for every element and we say then prediction should equal to prediction. So we basically add to prediction every time. And then we need to use uh, WG times XIG. And then we return predictions. This is our simple linear regression. So it uh, basically does a sum over uh, so for every element of uh, uh, our vector, feature vector, we multiply it by corresponding weight, and then everything goes to uh, prediction. So at the end, what we have is this prediction has exactly this sum. And uh, yeah, we can test it. It will not uh, be really correct now. So did I not execute it? And let's use this xi example. Okay, didn't execute this. Yeah, so it gives us some predictions. So it doesn't make much sense uh, for now because these values we just um, came up with them uh, ourselves. So let's put something else. So for this one, we can use um, 7.17. Then for this one, 0 0.01. For this one, uh, 0 0.04, and for this one, 0 0.002. Yeah. So now we we will talk, of course, about um, how do we come with these uh, weights. But for now, so we have some weights. We have our feature vector, right? And we combine them, and we have a prediction. So we have our um, bias term, which is uh, 7.17. Then what we do next is we multiply um, our uh, feature um, and horsepower by its weight, 0 0.01. Then we get the next feature, which is uh, uh, gallons per mile in the city uh, with its uh, weight. And then finally, we have popularity, which is 86. And then the weight for this popularity and this one. So we have uh, now, this is what our prediction uh, prediction is uh, made of. So multiple parts. And as we see at the end is 12.3, uh, 12 right? 12.3. So let's think about this. So what does it actually mean? Um, so we start with this. So this is our bias term. And this is what we predict about a car if we don't know anything about this. So let's say we don't know anything about the car, it's just an average car. So what would be the price we predict for this car? And for this car, we say it's logarithm of the price, it's 7.17. But we actually do know something about the car. It's not just the car, right? It's uh, we know that it has that many um, horsepowers, right? and then for each of the horsepowers. So let's say if 
this car had only one horsepower, then um, the price would increase by 0 0.01. For, let's say, 100 uh, times this, we will get one, right? And then, so basically, the more horsepower the engine has, the more expensive the car becomes, right? That's, uh, I think it's logical, right? Then for the next feature, it's uh, miles per gallon uh, in the city. So apparently the more, uh, the more car consumes in the city, the more expensive it is, right? So for any extra mile uh, per gallon, it, the price is affected by this much. So let's say if we have uh, a car that has uh, 10 miles per gallon, then it would actually be less expensive than this by 0 0.04. And if we increase it by 11, we get uh, we get more expensive cars. So for any extra mile uh, per gallon, the car becomes more and more expensive. And uh, I, I think it kind of makes sense because the cars that uh, consume more fuel, they are fancier probably. That's why you have this relationship. And then finally, you have this uh, popularity, which is number of mentions in a Twitter, which uh, has a pretty low weight. So it doesn't seem like it's affecting the price too much. So like for every um, extra mention on Twitter, the car becomes just a little bit more expensive. Like you really need to mention, uh, and it's not just one person, it's like how many people mention this car in general. So really a lot of people need to mention this car uh, for this to be, uh, popular and expensive yeah maybe like tesla i don't know because it's popular it, it people talk about this um, in social media and then uh, yeah for them maybe this number is very high and i don't know and for them it really affects the price but for usual cars it doesn't okay so this is how we can make sense from this and uh, remember actually so this value so this is the value we uh arrive at the end. So this is not the final price because we did uh, this uh, logarithm of y minus one, right? So now we need to undo this logarithm. And to undo the logarithm, uh, we need to do exponent, right? So we need to um, do uh, exponent. And that's why now let's do this in uh, with NumPy. There is a function called logarithm. And we just do this up here and uh, exponent, sorry. And yeah, so for this car, the prediction is uh, 22, uh, 222,000 um, dollars, right? So this is the prediction. And uh, yeah, we forgot to do minus one. So this is the prediction. And actually there is a shortcut uh, here. We don't need to write minus one every time. So we just use, so like we have a shortcut for uh, logarithm uh, is one P. Um, so I think if we put this here, we should be back to, yeah, to this. So they, they kind of undo each other. So this is the prediction for this car. So we implemented a linear regression. So we saw how to do this. So remember the formula that we have. So we implemented this formula on a small uh, feature vector with of size three. And it was just uh, one vector. And in the next video, we will try to generalize it to more examples. So see you soon.